All right, when playing over dominant chord grooves, using intervals of thirds is another element every rhythm guitar player needs to have. But in order to use them effectively, you really need to know the harmonized scale up the neck horizontally. So let's take a look at the Mixolydian scale in thirds in the key of G. So let's take, uh, say, this G root right here at the fifth fret on the D string, together with that B note there at the fourth fret on the G string. Okay, so that would be an interval of a third. Well, how do I know that's a third? Well, basically, I'm just gonna count up from that G note in the G Mixolydian scale, one, two, three, until I arrive at that B note there, and that's an interval of a third. Now, to continue that up the D and G string, all I'm gonna do is go up to the next note in the scale on both of those strings. So say from the G note here, I'm gonna move to the A note, which would be the next note on the scale, and from the B note here on the G string, I'm gonna move to the C note, the next note of the scale there. So this would be the next interval of a third on these strings. And then to find the rest of them, you're just going to continue that all the way up the D and G string. Next one would be that B note in combination with the D, the C with the E, the D with the F. Make sure you use the flat seven because we're in Mixolydian here. E together with the G, F and the A, and back kind of where we started here, an octave above. So that is the pattern on the D and G string. Now you need to make sure that you learn these patterns on all string pairs. So let's take, say, the notes on the G and the B string now. Again, just the G Mixolydian scale in pairs of strings. All right, let's take uh, the notes on the B and high E. Now, learning this can seem kind of overwhelming at first. So what I suggest you do is kind of learn them in groups of two or three at a time and to see those relative to either a chord shape or a root. So let's take that one that we started with down here. And usually what I suggest is learning, say, this one together with the next two and seeing this relative to your bar chord right here at the third fret. So there's our E-shaped bar chord. I'm seeing this group of three intervals of thirds, starting with, with this pair right here, taken out of that chord shape, and the next two are gonna look like that. Now, you wanna do that because when you go into another key, you're gonna have that shape memorized. So say if I go up to the key of C, Right? Let's just go up to the rel relative same placement there. The pattern of the thirds is going to be exactly the same. All right, so let's do another one. Let's take, say, the notes on the G and B string. Now I have this, 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 right? So if I want to move that up to C, again, it's all relative. The shapes stay the same. So the best way to start learning these thirds so it's not too overwhelming is just, again, in little groups of either two or three of them at a time relative to a chord shape. Now, you also need to see how those stack up vertically. So I see this, and I also see this. Or I see this, and I see this. Okay, so you need to see how things uh, line up vertically as well and inside of chord shapes. Another good example of a pair that you should learn relative to a chord shape would be seeing this G chord here or say the G9 chord here and seeing this pair, right? This one lives right inside that G major bar chord. This one lives inside of that G9 chord. And you can use these two in combination all over the place. You can use that in combination with say a nine chord. Now, another great thing you can do with these thirds is use a bit of chromaticism with them. So I could take that same pair that we just found, and I can use the passing third in between. Right there, and I can kind of make a groove using that. Little sidestep at the end. And another way that you hear people use these dominant thirds a lot is with just right hand palm muting. 
something like this. All right, so there's some ideas in using dominant thirds. It's a tool you definitely have to have in your bag.